Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's third and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather next 10 to 14 days for today's third and final video. So day 10 will take us to around the 30th of July. We'll be able to extend out beyond that. We say GFS and ECM on summers over a couple of weeks. Hello at CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. That's going to take us to the middle of August. I shall get on that for you uh, very shortly. Just say that the first video really saves our 7 a.m. forecast. We've also released the ECM WF 30 day slash six weeks look ahead. So have a look at that if you'd like to uh, do that. Please like, share, subscribe on all of the videos. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Now we have hit 11.5k subscribers. So we did that yesterday. Subs move quite quickly. Uh, yesterday, so we are now at 11,500 subscribers, which means just 500 to go to get 12k. So the grind to 12k subscribers officially uh, begins today. So yes, we are now grinding our way to 12k. And wait and see how quickly it takes us to get there, you know, how long we have to wait. But uh, but hopefully it won't be too long. Hopefully we might be able to do it by the end of the summer. I, I think that'll be uh, a big ask. It'll be probably nearer September, October time. But uh, but yeah, thank you so much everybody for getting us this far. And if you aren't yet subbed to our channel, then please can you uh, give us a sub. And uh, and yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. Tell friends, family, everybody else who subscribe as well. Thank you so much everyone uh, for doing that for, for uh, Gaz or Webby's. When we get to 12k, we're going to do a giveaway. Now I'm not sure if we're going to give away an Amazon voucher or a bit of merch. Uh, you know, Gaz or Webby's merch just launched. Um, so I'll let everybody know a little bit near the time but there will be a 12k giveaway you don't need to worry about that right okay let's get on with the video then so sorry with latest observations from xy where it's hot out there again today the heat wave goes on so we've got 30 degrees currently flashing away there uh somewhere in the south of london i can't find the station oh there it is north Holt. north Holt's at 30 degrees i saw a heat for just now was at 29 and we've also got uh boston down is it somewhere around here flashing away at 30 degrees well it's a little bit a little bit difficult there it is there it is there it is uh lark hill is also at 30 degrees otherwise we're sort of upper 20s to western is at 27 cambridge is at 28 i wonder if that's for botanical gardens um to norwich is at 24 birmingham uh, at 27 into wales got sandy bridge at 26 come curry is at 26 right in the north of wales very hot there uh bingley 25 into northern england you know, really warm temperatures, these, uh, for so far north. Albemarle is at 24, 24. And even into Scotland, we've got Aviemore at 22. Much cooler, fresher, more refresher. Aberdeen, 16 degrees. I wonder if there's some low cloud or murk coming in off the North Sea. Uh, and Stornoway is at 15. So, uh, and South Uist is at 16. Uh, so, if you don't like the heat, get yourself to eastern or western Scotland. That's the place to go. Uh, particularly western Scotland, I think. Uh, east Scotland might warm up if there's mist and low cloud there, and that burns off. But western Scotland, I think, is uh, generally cooler. So, that's the place to be out temperature is if you don't like this hot weather. It's very warm in Belfast, well, at 23 degrees. Now, of course, this uh, heat wave is bringing the CET up. So, we've now reached 18 degrees uh, with the central temperature. There it is, 18.0 provisional to uh to yesterday the 19th so yes we have hit 18 degrees for the section temperature now it's going to carry on rising over the next few days so by the end of the week i would imagine that's going to be getting into the mid to high 18s probably going to be somewhere like 18.5 to uh 18.9 it does look as though this heat wave will be ending at the end of the week though so through the last week of july that will probably start to tick down and then there is also going to be quite a large downwards correction uh, of the CT this month. I think we're expecting to take off around half a degree from the CT uh, this month. So, so uh, actually, in reality, the CT is still only around 17.5 if you take into account that half a degree is going to be coming off. But, but it is gen genuinely going to hit 18 degrees, you know, uh, over the next uh, two or three days. Uh, but then, then with downwards corrections and a cooler final week to uh, July, we're probably going to finish up on the cusp of 18 so somewhere like 17.7 uh, to like uh, 18.1 or 2 i would imagine will be the range that we'll end up with so it's going to be touch and go again 18 celsius ct july or not it'll be quite exciting to see how that works out 
A few fun songs out there at the moment. So uh, this is, of course, from the uh, Weather Outlook. You can see if we zoom in, let's zoom in. You can see we have got one or two heavy showers and storms breaking out. Not all that many of them. Uh, though they are quite scattered, uh, just a few there between Nottingham and Sheffield, uh, and down here we've got a few to the east of Cambridge. Most areas are dry, it looks like something else just beginning to pop off to the north of London, but most places are dry. This is how UKV, the, high, the highest resolution model that you can get, uh, was forecasting precipitation for midday. So, uh, UKV, you know, uh, forecasting more storms than there is in reality, actually, and this is the highest resolution resolution model you can get so so even this is overdoing for the storm potential you see they are very scattered in nature anyway but definitely not as many storms around at uh, this stage as, as like uh as, as see from radar picture like ukv was predicted that's 1 p.m 2 p.m 3 p.m so the storms aren't going to be as widespread as this but there will be a few storms around uh this afternoon if you get one you will know about it it could well bring uh trench rain flash flooding uh hail and quite severe lightning Bear in mind, the vast majority of places are going to miss these thunderstorms uh, today and stay hot and dry. But as I say, there will be storms scattered around in this southern part of the country. If you get one, you are going to know about it a big time. I can promise you that. Uh, we're doing it over again tomorrow. There will be some more scattered thunderstorms brewing up tomorrow. This time, perhaps more focus on East Anglia, South East England. Again, I think most places will miss those storms and, and stay dry. Uh, tomorrow. Uh, then Thursday looks a mostly dry day. Actually, just one or two storms breaking out. That's a little bit more focus on Northern England over Pennines with those. Uh, and then, of course, into Friday, and that's when the breakdown begins to happen. So by the end of Friday afternoon, we're beginning to bring some thunderstorms into the far southwestern corner uh, with UKV. Look what happens overnight, Friday into Saturday. Up come those storms pushing across central southern parts of England and Wales. By breakfast time, Saturday got big storms through uh, the Midlands into southeastern England. And that's bring an end to the heat wave. So if you're fed up with the heat, if you don't like the hot weather, then uh, it's going to end, you know, uh, at the end of the week and into the weekend. That's three o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday. Some really violent thunderstorms then being signaled right in the southern half of the uh, country. So the, the, uh, heat, the heat wave is going to end, going to break in thunderstorms in the south. Friday night and into Saturday, and then things will start to cool down. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles the next couple of weeks for rugby. The red line is virtually uh, upper air temperature average for rugby, very close to me. So starting off hotter than average, of course, we're well above average at the moment. We're going to keep it well above average through to Friday. It's really from Friday into the weekend that the change takes place. Notice the uh, upper air temperatures are dropping through the weekend, falling away back close to average. As we get through into the closing days of July, and like the first days of August, we look a lot cooler then. Albeit there are one or two hot outliers, but it looks like there's a definitive cool down taking place there from uh, sort of the weekend onwards. And, and next week will be a much cooler and fresher feeling uh, weekend. Precipitation wise, so the precipitation wise just here are the scattered thunderstorms. But do bear in mind, most places are going to miss those thunderstorms. So looking a little bit more dramatic. It will actually be in reality unless you happen to get a thunderstorm today or tomorrow. Uh, from weekend onwards, uh, then we see these precipitation spikes just here. That's the fungi breakdown, of course. And then next week, much more unsettled with showers and longer spells of uh, rain coming through, taking us into the beginning of August. Temperature anomalies from the 20th of July to 28th going to be hotter than average. And precipitation anomalies from the 20th, 28th of July, driving average in the northern half of the country, a little bit wetter than average in the southern half of the country. Again, this will be primarily down to thunderstorms. Uh, let's win from that from EarthNorthSchool.net shows that we're under high pressure for jet stream and the areas of low pressure being pushed off up to the north up here. And uh, we continue to be sat under that area of high pressure built in from the Azores and uh, set up the heat wave. Right, this is how the latest, latest UK Met is looking. Let's put webcam back up for this, shall we? This, oh, hello, I'm back. Uh, right, so this is how the latest UK Met is looking for Friday. There's that thundery low coming out of uh, northern parts of... Uh, of um, parts of France. Uh, we're under the high pressure still though for one more day on Friday but by s Friday night Saturday 
up comes that thundery low, and that brings an end to the heat wave and uh, brings an increase in risk of heavy showers and thunderstorms with it. That low pressure, as it like a trough of low, sits over the country into the beginning of next week. We'll bring further heavy showers and thunderstorms. And then by uh, Tuesday, so this is midnight Tuesday, as far as we go to with UK, that, that low pressure begins to ease out into the North Sea. Well, obviously, we're pulling in a much cooler northwesterly wind base, probably ice bars back to see that the air is originating from like the south of Iceland. So, uh, much cooler air coming in through the early part of next week, much, much fresher, and probably starting to bring in like a showery type flow from off the Atlantic. Right, so that's UK Met done. This is how the uh, GFS is looking in terms of the uh, 6Z. So here we go. High pressures over top of the country on Friday. And then we go through into Saturday. Up comes this thundery low from the south. That's bringing an end to the heat wave as we get into the weekend. We've got that thundery air low pressures over to the south of the country with showers along the spells of rain. Of course, the big unknown with this is how many thunderstorms there will be. You never quite know this far out how many storms you're going to get. So we're just going to wait and see uh, a little bit close to the time frame. If it looks like there's enough thundery potential, I might do uh, like a half an hour storm watch live uh, on Thursday, if that's okay with everybody. But I'll let everybody know a little bit nearer time frame because it's still all outside the high res model time frame, really up than uh, UKV. Uh, right, so uh, by the time you get through to the open next week, that thundery low moving off into the North Sea. Down comes this cooler and fresher northwest wind could bring some showy rain uh, with it. And then to next week, a very different uh, weather pattern set surfaces. Air of low pressure starts pushing in from the north and from the northwest. It'll bring showers along the spells of rain. We tighten the ice bar, so it's going to get a bit windy as well uh, next week. But the main difference is actually going to be the drop in temperature because the air around this low is coming from the north Atlantic. That's clearly much cooler and fresher air coming in from off the Atlantic. So relief on the way for anybody who doesn't like the hot weather. Uh, right, up to day 10, which is the 30th of July. Still looking unsettled, low pressure to the north and east of Scotland. Still bringing in a showering and uh, much cooler northwesterly flow as well. In the more extended range with the GFS 6Z, we keep high pressure away to our northwest, low pressure to our east. So we keep cooler winds from the, like the north northeasterly direction and probably bring in further showers to eastern parts of the country. Up to the end of the GFS run, which today gets us to the 5th of August, we bring the next low in from off the Atlantic, which will bring further showers, if not longer spells of rain. And again, all types of Atlantic driven flow, so temperatures will be, uh, you know, a lot lower through the first week of August, if that is right. GM looks like that again, the high pressure just clinging on uh, at midnight on Friday, but by midnight Saturday, up is coming this thundery low from the south by Sunday, we've got low pressure off the coast of East Anglia. That brings heavy showers and thunderstorms, potentially anyway, to England and Wales. Looks like Scotland and Northern Ireland will miss out on this thundery breakdown, but we'll, we'll gradually start to pull cooler air in from the north and northeast to there. Uh, as well. And then into the early part of next week, just gradually re-establishing an Atlantic flow, really, with the GM. So by the end of the GM uh, run, day 10, Friday the 30th of August, we're into this cool and showery uh, northwesterly wind. Uh, that's how the ECM is looking. So again, high pressure dominates the weather as we go through into Friday, bringing loads of dry, fine and hot weather, probably for one last day. Then by Saturday, Friday night, Saturday, up comes that thundery area of low pressure. We're all within the trough of low on Sunday. So shells on the spells of rain away from Scotland and Northern Ireland. Anyway, and then into the early part of next week, again, we just gradually start to re-establish a little bit more of an Atlantic flow, so things begin to cool down. However, out of the models, I think the ECM is probably the warmest through, uh, through next week, but even that does lower the temperature quite a bit uh, through the course of next week. This is the uh, latest precipitation type forecast based on that ECM run from tometeo.com. So there's the thunderous storm potential this afternoon. Again, they won't be as widespread as that, I don't think. But uh, some places certainly will get torrential thunderstorms with severe hail, thunder and lightning uh, mixed in. Most storms very quickly die out as we go through tonight and then into uh, tomorrow. Again, a few storms breaking out, not as widely as today. Most places stay dry. Uh, and then, of course, we get through to the end of the week and up comes uh, the thundery breakdown from the south. So heavy showers and thunderstorms pushing northwards through Friday night and into Saturday across England. Well, Scotland and Northern Ireland stay mostly dry. And these thunderstorms continue then 
on into Sunday as well as the weather breaks, the heat wave breaks, and uh, things cool down very uh, quickly. And um, we go through to next week, and we're looking a little bit more showery then, with showery rain coming in from off the Atlantic Ocean. Right at that point, I think we'll turn the webcam off and we'll show you the options on the table within the ECM ensembles. Right, so let's have a look at those then. Uh, so these are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles for day 10, which will get us to the 30th of July from the Icelandic Met Office. We have 26 members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure over and to the north of the country. High pressure reaching through the middle of North Atlantic, going up towards Greenland and around the high, we, around the low, I should say, around the trough, we'll be bringing in pretty cool air from the northwest. So cool, showery, and unsettled there. 19 will have high pressure away to our northwest. Weaker pressure to the south, not particularly low, but weaker pressures threatening showers uh, to the south. That would include the patrol and the operation run. And then six have a big mid-Atlantic ridge going back to northern blocking over Greenland with low pressure to our east. Obviously, that will pull down uh, a really cool north northeasterly wind. So, so all change there by the end of July, uh, looking much cooler with a lot of those options and more unsettling. Two weeks' time, this is uh, these are the options that we've got. Gets us to the 4th of August. 14 members of the East Seven Souls with northern blocking around Greenland and a deep trough of low pressure over top of the country. We're bringing in a cool northeast wind and looking wet and cool. Uh, with that, wet and cool there for the 4th of August. What a change. 11 members of the East Seven Souls again with this mid Atlantic reach towards Greenland. Uh, weaker trough of low pressure to the east. Still quite cool though with that. Winds coming in from the north. Uh, 10 with high pressure in the Atlantic and going to our north winds will be coming in more of a northeasterly direction nine with high pressure to our north that's probably the warmest option we bring in more of an easterly wind with our east is in august are going to be quite warm of course and then four with uh, low pressure right over top of country or seven i should say with low pressure over top of country of scandinavia and so that's going to be quite cool and showery as well it looks like once this heat wave breaks we're going into something cooler and more unsettled for the end of July and possibly lasting into the beginning of August. CFSV2 looks like this. is a 500 millibar height spring down to wheat piers. The first wheat pier takes from the 20th to 26th of July. The coming week, of course, dominated by high pressure. So we're high and dry. It's going to be hot until the weekend. And then we get the thundery breakdown Friday night into Saturday. All change for week two. This is the 27th of July to the 2nd of August. Mid-Atlantic Ridge heading up towards Greenland. Trough of low pressure over top of the UK. Much more unsettled with that, of course. Showers along the spells of rain, probably thundery. And a lot cooler as well with winds coming in from the north or from the northeast. Week three also looks unsettled and much cooler. This is the third to the ninth of August. Again, that trough of low pressure over top of the country with high pressure in the middle of the North Atlantic. We find that again we're bringing in a wind from the north, north, northeasty direction. And with a trough of low, we will be very unsettled as well. And not much of a change for uh, week four either. 10th to the 16th of August. Low pressure again is over and to the north of the country. Heights rising a bit towards Spain, but not really doing much for us in terms of turning us dry and warmer. And high pressure is somewhere over towards Newfoundland. It means that we turn wind from a northerly to a westerly, which might not be quite as cool, but nevertheless, still pretty unsettled with low pressure, bringing showers along as well as the rain. And uh, a bit of a cool westerly wind as well. So uh, after this heat wave, it, it, you know, it looks like the weather is breaking uh, definitively if the CFS is right. Last thing I want to show you is this. These are the warnings from the UK Met. I probably should have started uh, with these, but uh, quite unusual this. So, so we've got a yellow warning for thunderstorms for today, which of course isn't that unusual. And that covers like eastern England, really, from uh, from like Nottingham uh, down towards the, the southeastern coast. The other warning, though, is a little bit so thunderstorms are developing this afternoon may cause impacts to travel and power supplies. We'll really explain that with these big storms around, most places will miss them and stay dry, but if you get one, could be quite severe. The other warning is quite unusual, though. This is an amber warning for extreme heat. You don't see that very often from the UK uh, Met. So, uh, so uh, this is covering, like, much of Wales, certainly central, southern mid Wales, into the south and west Midlands, and then down into, like, southern, southwestern England. Uh, an amber, ex amber warning for extreme heat. 
High temperatures both day and night will continue this week, leading to public health impacts. I won't go through everything that they're saying about that, but I will link to the severe weather warnings page in the description. So if you're at all concerned about the hot weather, you know, uh, do take a look. And this amber warning for extreme heat is valid for uh, tomorrow, and it does cut, stretch up to Northern Ireland as well tomorrow, which is very unusual to get an extreme heat warning for Northern Ireland. Well, uh, and then it's valid for Thursday as well for the southwestern areas and Northern Ireland. And then by Friday, pretty much restricted just to Northern Ireland at the moment. Of course, we begin to start breaking things down uh, by Friday. So, uh, yeah, if you're at all worried about the hot weather uh, and the heat wave and, and whatnot, then do check out the warnings and advice from the UK. But as I say, it's very unusual to get an extreme heat one. I can't remember if we've ever had one before. We have had some big heat spikes over the past few summers. I'm sure we must have got some sort of warning for, for uh, you know, the hot temperatures like in 2019 when we broke the UK's temperature record at uh, the Botanical Gardens there in Cambridge. Um, but I can't remember whether we've had an amber warning or not. But anyway, that's what UK Met is doing. Uh, so have a look at those warnings and alerts and so on if you're at all concerned. And take the advice, stay hydrated, uh, you know, and all things you need to do to keep yourself uh, well. And by the weekend, this will be over. Right, so uh, that's it for your uh, 10 to 14. That's it for today's videos, actually. That's it for your 10 to 14 and today's videos. Now, I'm having a tooth out this afternoon. So, uh, Sav is going to be doing the 7 a.m. forecast for you tomorrow. So, you'll be able to see the furry one do doing the weather tomorrow morning. Whether I'm back tomorrow, just got to wait and see. It's a wisdom tooth that's being pulled back to. So, it's quite a big one, quite deep roots. We'll see how I get on. If, you know, if I'm okay with it, then, then uh, I'll be recording tomorrow, as usual, uh, after Savvy's forecast. If not, I'll take the day off, uh, you know, and just wait for it to settle down. So, all will be revealed. We'll find out how I am after the tooth has come out uh, tomorrow, uh, you know, well, tonight, tomorrow. And, uh, and, yeah, I shall let everybody know what's happening on the community page and our social media accounts. Of course. Right, that's it for your videos for today. Then you enjoy the rest of your Tuesday afternoon, assuming you're not having teeth pulled out. Um, and uh, we'll see you soon. Uh, but for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.